Hello again, and welcome to our 40 days of prayer and fasting through the book of Romans, and it is just about to culminate next Friday. We should complete the book, Lord willing, and it's a great time because that's when our church starts to uh, experience revival or re revival meetings. I hope we're already experiencing some revival, but we have a revival meeting set for October the, uh, the 6th, 7th, and 8th, and so we're excited about that with uh, my uncle coming in from uh, Indiana. Uh, Lane Lohman's going to be with us. We also have Gus's car and truck show on the 7th, so that's a little bit of a plug there. For what's coming up at our church, but I hope you'll be praying for it and continue to follow along with what we're doing here until then. Again, it will summarize uh, next Friday, Lord willing. But as we look into God's Word today, we're looking in Romans chapter 13, and we hope if everything works out to finish the uh, the chapter as uh, we're, we got a good ways into it. It's not a very long chapter, but we're going to begin with verse 8 and go to the end of the chapter, Lord willing. If you're watching today, how about saying hello to us? so that uh, I might can say hello back to you. It's great to have so many who have followed along uh, through this study, and we hope that you'll continue to do so again as it uh, continues to run through this week and the end of next week. We're on day number 32, if, that's, uh, if you can believe it. And today we're going to look at some things that, uh, wow, it, it causes you to assess where you are spiritually on a personal level, what motivates you, and you start to understand and realize how far away you are from being the person that you ought to be in Jesus. So I want to uh, go ahead and greet a few people we're looking in today. Good morning to Daryl and Darlene, and good morning to Helen. So glad to have you guys with us. As Again, as people join in, please make sure to say hello, and I'll uh, speak back to you. Uh, give me one second. We're going to get started in our study on Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13 is going to talk about debt for just a second. And when we think about debt, I think that we just, if you're like me, you want to get it unshackled. You want to get rid of the debt. Whatever you owe someone, you want to get it taken care of. Because I hate being in debt. It causes sleepless nights. It causes us to feel as though we've got to get things straightened out. And uh, But today we're going to talk about a debt that you can never repay. And that may sound like a burden to some of us, uh, but it's really a, a great experience because I'm glad that Jesus uh, hasn't found limits to this debt either. And let me show you what I'm talking about. Good morning to Tony. Glad you're with us today also. Verse 8 of Romans 13. Let no debt remain outstanding. And I think that's good advice for anyone, parents to children, grandchildren, whatever. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. Some of us may get to the point where we feel like, I've loved enough. I have, I've tried enough. I've done everything I know to do. I've, lo I've been loving all my... But we don't come... And we don't come across as loving anymore. You know, it's like, I have, they know how I feel about them, whether it's a spouse, a child, a parent, just a fellow co-worker. They know how I feel about them. No, you know, you still need to show that. Show some kindness. Show some love, respect. Love one another. It's a debt you'll never actually get repaid. I want to say good morning to Forrest. Thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, and I'm so glad that Jesus continues to show his love. And, and this is a guy who took the cross for us, but he continues to pour out his love upon us. It, it's fresh, it's new, and it's available to anyone who wants to believe. So can we have that same experience? Can we have that same outlook? I want to love as Jesus loved. I never want... The, to find the, the end of my love for someone or for, in, for, the, for what God has died for or for what Jesus has died for. And, and listen to what he says. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. This sounds a lot, a lot like what Jesus said, doesn't it? He talks about all the law and the prophets hanging upon two particular commandments. Love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and also to love your neighbor as yourself. And look at how Paul brings this together, beginning with verse 9. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. And whatever other command there may be are summed up in this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfillment of the law. How many times has uh, covetousness, jealousy, gotten in the way of our relationship with someone? How many times have we been unforgiving? And, you know, you look at some of these other things like adultery, 
We look at our neighbor, we look at our coworker, we think this is someone that we should care about, show kindness to, and and sadly, Satan slips in there, throws an illicit relationship our way. So we have to be careful in the way that we love, in the way that we respect. So it's not only just pour out your heart completely to this person, make yourself vulnerable in ways that you shouldn't. It is, it, I mean, you know, it's a conscious effort to love. It's it's something that you know you're not wild in your love, in that you don't love with purpose. And I think sometimes we we get into the habit of of trying to, I, I guess, make excuses for the things that we do, whether they're being cold to someone or whether they're being too close to someone that you really have no business being that close to. As a matter of fact, the Greek actually implies here uh, when it talks about committing adultery and coveting. Seeking the illicit bed, a strange bed. So, you know, I think Paul is talking about how we need to open our arms to welcome people in. And we need to do more of that. We need to be people of love, trying to repay the debt of love that we will never repay because, you know, Jesus loves us so much. And I'm so glad he does. We need to love like Jesus loves, but we also need to love with purpose. Otherwise, there wouldn't be so many issues in society today with illicit affairs, even within the church. We need to make sure that we love with purpose and love as Christ loves. Cert- certainly put others before ourselves and think about those that we're dearest to, our families. We need to love them as Christ would have us to love them. So there's so much I could say about that, but we need to continue. Verse 11, and do this, understanding the present time. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. Listen to that. Uh, The hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber. Would you describe your spiritual life as one that's just kind of like you're living as though you're asleep? There's a lot of things we can do in our sleep. You can dream, but of course, some people talk in their sleep. I, my wife giggled in her sleep the other day, and I told her, I said, you know, you giggled last night in your sleep, and there's a lot of things, you know, people sometimes walk in their sleep. Like I said, there's, there's, there's things that people do in their sleep, but they're not the same person when they're awake, and when we look at this passage, I think it is convicting because so many of us just see our spiritual life as just ho-hum, it's just, you know, routine, We've been doing it for the last 30, 40 years, whatever the case may be. We go to church, we, you know, we pray, we say our morning prayer, we bless the food, we pray at night, you go to bed, whatever the case may be. But he said, no, we need to wake up. Why? Because the day is approaching of Jesus' return. We need to be proactive. You know, when you know that something is culminating, that it's going to eventually, it's coming to the climax and the end time or the end point, uh, the end game, if you will, whether it is a game, you know, it's amazing to me how many people will tune into a game that they weren't interested in. It could have been on the whole day, but then when it's coming down to the last seconds, that's when everybody wants to see what's going on. And Paul wants that same sort of emphasis. As we see the hour, in, hour approaching and coming, we should be more active and awaken from our spiritual slumber because our salvation, meaning the time of judgment, is nearer now than when we first believed. It's almost time to meet Jesus. And sometimes it's age, sometimes it's just the sign of the times. We need to get ready and be prepared. Verse 12, the night is nearly over. Think about if Paul was talking about this just after the resurrection of Jesus to the New Testament church that's just been planted in Rome, if he thought the night is nearly over then, certainly the night is nearly over now, 2,000 years later. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. It's interesting because Paul makes it sound kind of like he's changing clothes here. We got to take off the old self, put it away before we can bring in the new self. I personally think that it's more of an active transition because I think if you concentrate so much on putting away the old self, then you're going to get caught up with that and you're not going to be ready to receive what God has in store for you. I think basically you think about putting on Jesus, being transformed into Jesus, and it's sort of like a diet. You know, you you have to eat something. You don't just stop eating. You eat healthier foods. So I think of the spiritual life as one of transformation from what was to what should be. 
Paul talks about it more as taking off the old and putting on the new. And hey, who am I to argue with the Apostle Paul? But I like both pictures, and I think that one goes hand in hand with the other. If we're starting a transition into being the people of God we should be, then obviously we want to throw off those old things. What old things are we talking about? He talks about the deeds of darkness, putting aside the deeds of darkness and putting on the armor of light. Verse 13, he's giving us some examples. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. These are the deeds of the darkness. Carry it on in the night. You know, we need to walk as though we're in the daytime, even when it's dark outside, because see, we think of the nighttime as hiding us. And he's saying, no, you know, we need to walk around as in the daytime. Let everything be, uh, let everything be revealed to the light. And, and we shouldn't live in a way that where there's anything we're ashamed to come into the light. So we continue the, with that, and he looks at the, those dark deeds, and then he compares them to the light deeds. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in carousing, drunkenness. King James uses lust, uh, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension or you know jealousy, King James talks about. We don't want to be that way. We, uh, we want to, uh, or, and that word is also used in the NIV. Envy is used in the King James, not in dissension and jealousy. We don't want to you know, kind of wedge people apart from one another. We want to welcome people together. Verse 14, rather clothe yourselves. Take off the old clothes, put on the new clothes. Clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. Paul is very emphatic in his writings about there is the fruit of the Spirit and there's the lust of the flesh, and the two are completely at odds with each other. So we want to put away those fleshly things, those dark deeds, open ourselves to the light, walk in the daylight, and put on Christ. Let him shape us, mold us, and you know that's, that's what God wants because that creates in us a spirit of that indebtedness we have to love one another. And that is a debt you will never be able to repay, although we need to continue in the process of trying to repay it. It makes us great people to be around when we're willing to love. And love with purpose. Think in our minds, I'm going to love this person no matter what they do. And also it keeps us from going too far in our love for our fellow man or fellow woman. Uh, because it keeps us from even getting into a sort of illicit relationships. Very important. Hey, I want to say good morning to Juliana. Thanks for joining us today as well. Great group to have with us. I hope you'll share this with someone. And uh, let's pray together. On our Tuesday gatherings, we pray for revival. And as I mentioned when we started this study today, hey, good morning, Tony. Good, good to hear from you today also. When we started this study, we had a different prayer need Monday through Friday. And as I mentioned today, specifically starting this study, our revival is coming up a week from this Friday. We're praying for revival today. Let's pray for those meetings, and let's also, though, pray for true revival in our heart, a, a revived spirit. You, you were revived once. Let's be revived with what Jesus can, can do in us and what the Holy Spirit can speak to us about. Let's pray. Almighty God, I thank you for your word, for the opportunity to share it today. I thank you for these who joined me, and I thank you for this ministry that we're doing and walking through your word. I pray today, Father, for revival in our hearts, that we will consistently display love to all we come into contact with. We'll realize and recognize this is a debt we can never fully repay because you have loved us so much. We thank you for the death and resurrection of Jesus, him showing us the way to live, and we want to put away those fleshly desires and natures and those things of the darkness, and we want to live in the light. Help us to do that. Help us to be light to others in the way that we love, because we are so grateful for the love he shows us. We pray for our revival meetings next Friday beginning, and we pray that you'd be with uh, my Uncle Lane as he brings the messages, be with the music, be with every aspect of it, and we just pray you'd have your way throughout that, our big weekend. And we pray, Father, that uh, it won't just be a series of meetings, but that we will start today to be revived in our hearts. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you again for joining me. Good morning again to all of you who said hello. And I hope you'll be back with me tomorrow as we continue. We're in a new chapter, and we're just really starting to wind up this great book of Romans. If you haven't caught one of our studies, you can see them all on our YouTube channel, Real Gold Hill. 
God bless you. Have a great day, everyone.